Right, enough of this overpowered, best build ever, this build is broken, hard sale. Money. I mean, this build is pretty overpowered, is one of the best I've played, and is pretty broken. You are going to have a lot of fun with this one, balancing ranged sorceries with melee critical hits. Dodge, duck, zip, dive, and dodge. We're using Night Sorceries with Rani's Dark Moon thanks to the Staff of Loss. We have a Rapier with the Cold Affinity and boosted critical damage of 130. Our Cold Rapier has the Glint Blade Phalanx Ash of War, helping us break enemy stance for our crits. And we have some awesome Elden Bling armor, beefy talismans, and a nice full flask of Wondrous Physic. My fellow Tarnished, I give you the Night Blade. Okay, let's start with the class and stats so we can wreck anything and everything. If you could leave me a like and subscribe, that would be awesome. Thanks. I started with the Astrologer class. We have... Figure at 55, Mind at 20, boosted to 21 by our Navy Hoods, Endurance at 12, Strength at 8, Dexterity at 50, Intelligence at 68, Faith at 7, and Arcane at 9. Let's have a look at our gear next. I will go over where you can find each piece of gear, Ashivore, Spell, and Sacred Tear later on. We have our Rapier with the Cold Affinity as our melee weapon, and what I love about this is not only the critical rating of 130, but also the fact that adding Frostbite lowers enemies' defense is by 20%. <laughs> and check this out against Melania. Proking Frostbite on her cancels her waterfowl. I used to use ice pots for this. Here she is about to destroy me, but nope. Sit down, Lady of Rot. My cold rapier saves the day. The Ash of War Glint Blade Phalanx is going to be used to break our enemy's stance, leaving them open to boosted critical hits. Now, we're casting our Night Sorceries with the Staff of Loss, the best staff for them. And what's great is that they are invisible, so bosses don't dodge them. We can really keep our distance in battle, fully charged Night Comets do respectable damage, Night Shard is great for mobility as we can cast it whilst running and jumping, and although Amber Shard is not being boosted by our Staff of Loss, it is also great for enemies that are out of range and for keeping up the chip damage so their stance doesn't reset. And I mean, sometimes you kill Melania with it. Of course, we start most fights by firing off Rani's Dark Moon to get Frostbite procced, to lower enemies' defenses by 20% before we unleash our Night Sorceries and critical hits. These are the talismans that support and boost the build. The Graven Mass Talisman raising our sorcery damage by 8%, the Godfrey Icon boosting the damage of our fully charged Night Comets by 15%, the Magic Scorpion Charm boosting our magic damage by 12% and increasing any physical damage we take by 10%, a worthy trade-off. And then we have the Dagger Talisman. This is increasing our critical hits by 17%. Now, if you don't want to lock yourself into charged Night Comets and the Godfrey Icon, you can switch in the Graven School Talisman, and along with the Graven Mass Talisman, you'll have a plus 12 overall damage boost to your sorceries. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic, we have the Magic Shrouded Crack Tier, boosting all our magic damage, and we have the Green Burst Crystal Tier, speeding up our stamina recovery as the bar is a little low. Our armor loadout is Elden Bling to the max. We have a Navy Hood boosting our mind stat by one point. This actually allows us to cast six Night Comets with a full FP bar before chugging. The rest of the gear is the Black Knife Armor set. Not only does this look awesome, but it makes no noise, which means we can sneak about and ambush enemies. Right, let's have a look at some combat. Start by chugging your Flask of Wondrous Physic, and then pop off Rani's Dark Moon. Then I like to throw up Clint Blade Phalanx and switch to Night Comet to snipe away. Depending on what you are fighting, you may just want to stay away and snipe enemies with Night Sorceries, but if you do want to get in close, keep Glint Blade Phalanx up and hitting enemies to get their stance broken and your awesome critical hits in. There's something for everyone with this build, I just love switching it up depending on the boss. Before we look at some boss showcasing, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Ash Knight Vest for this awesome build. You legend.
So there you have it guys, the Nightblade. Let's have a look at the gear and item locations before I sign off. I will also include links to all in the description. The Rapier can be purchased from the Twin Maiden Husks of the Round Table Hold for 1000 runes. The Staff of Lost can be found in Celia Town of Sorcery on a corpse hanging off this balcony. The Navy Hood and the rest of the Noble Set can be found in the East Windmilled Pasture here on the map. The Black Knife Armor Set is found on a corpse under an archway behind Ordina Liturgical Town in Consecrated Snowfield. The Graven Mast Talisman is found in a chest atop Albanoric Rise in the east of the Consecrated Snowfield. The Godfrey Icon drops from Godfrey the Grafted, found in the Golden Lineage Everjail. The Magic Scorpion Charm is obtained by giving Preceptor Sluvius the Amber Starlight after Sluvius tells you about his scheme. Link in the description. If you want to throw on the Graven School Talisman, it can be found in Raya Lucaria. Take a detour through a fake wall. Link in the description. The Magic Shrouded Crack Tier is dropped by Urtri Avatar in northeastern Leonia of the Lakes. The Green Burst Crystal Tier is dropped by the Urtri Avatar found in the minor Urtri and Kaled east of the Smouldering Church. The Glint Blade Phalanx Ash of War can be found after defeating Godric the Grafted in Stormvale Castle. Roger can be found in the Round Table Hold by the Balcony after speaking to him and receiving his rapier. Granny's Dark Moon can be found in the Shalonis Rise after unlocking the tower, link in the description. Nightshard can be purchased from Gowrie for 4,000 runes after completing his questline, link in description. Night Comet is found in a chest in Celia Town of Sorcery after lighting the torch atop a tower, link in the description. Amber Shard can be found on the Weeping Peninsula, found on a corpse in the underground jail of the Witchbane Ruins. There you go guys, let me know how you found this build in the comments, what would you do differently and what would you like to see next. All the best and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!